Hi, welcome back. In part one, we looked at this shot and added some muzzle flashes, and we also looked at the relighter. In part two, we are going to be adding a second muzzle flash to this shot here. Uh, these are H and K G36C assault rifles. As you can see, I've already uh, put a muzzle flash for uh, this one on the right, uh, and we're going to add one for this one on the left. Uh, I'm also going to add some petals and um, some randomness, um, some sparks as well. And finally, we're going to look at uh, matching uh, the grain, um, which is uh, sort of the final step in the compositing process. So I've got one instance module already applied with my position aim and trigger keyframes. Um, so in order to add a second flash, uh, there's no need to add another bang um, and and do all, go through all this process of choosing your um, your flash shape and properties. Uh, you can just add another instance. So you can either duplicate this flash instance here, but then you'd get all these keyframes, uh, or you can use the uh, module selector to add a second instance. So I'm just going to do that, and we get our second flash drawn in the middle of the screen, uh, and that comes down here bang flash instance two. Um, so I have already um, put some uh, markers on this layer so I know where to put the flash for this particular gun. So I'm going to go ahead now and uh, add the keyframes necessary to get this one firing. So I'll probably put that on fast forward uh, so I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, I think uh, we can tweak the uh, the positions uh, a bit more a bit later on if we need to, but for now I think that looks uh, pretty good. So the first thing I wanna do is add some petals. The petals are the star-shaped flashes that you get uh, with uh, assault rifles. Um, and it's really straightforward to add in bang. In the flash builder, uh, you have this uh, section here called petals and you can just choose a uh, configuration one two three which is like a upside down T or a, um, or this propeller shape uh, four five six and eight uh, this particular gun uh, has got four ports uh, and they face uh, up and uh, down and uh, left and right rather than uh, diagonally like this. So we can quickly adjust that by changing this roll setting here uh, to 45 degrees, which will put them in the correct orientation. We have to do that for both, like so. And then we can play around with uh, our shape profile to uh, get it into um, get it looking a bit more like we want. So at the moment, I think they're a bit long. I'm not so keen on this particular shape. Let's go through the different shape uh, presets for the petals. I think that one's quite nice. Uh, make them a tiny bit thinner. and uh, just play around with their settings a bit. So this angle setting here points them forward or points them back and you know, it probably uh, wouldn't be wise to have uh, petals that are pointed back, pretty dangerous I imagine. Uh, I think these ones would point pretty much straight up actually. So let's try, let's just try slightly off axis there, about 85 degrees. Uh, and we can make them a lot less bright or more bright than the main flash. And I think these are gonna be a little bit less bright. Let's try that there. See what that looks like. Okay. So the next thing I wanna try is uh, adding some randomness. If we look at this, the, the flash doesn't change that much petals look pretty similar all the way through. Um, the actual instances themselves have their own uh, unique random seed. 
So no two flashes that, that are on at the same time will look exactly the same, uh, but we can dial in a bit of randomness uh, using our randomization parameters down here, uh, just to try and make things uh, look a little more realistic. Um, so there are three uh, randomization parameters. The first one um, randomizes the main shape, uh, including the, uh, the length of the shape, uh, the age of the flash. Um, so you can look at the uh, the user manual for a bit more information about that. Uh, but it also mixes between the uh, shape profile that you've chosen here and the uh, various uh, built-in profiles uh, that it will uh, mix between during randomness. So if I if I start at zero, this uses the uh, uh, this uh, profile shape here. If I increase this, you'll see the shape changing a bit. Now it doesn't happen every time. It may very well use the uh, this this shape profile, but um, you know chances are much higher as you go as this gets gets more um, towards one hundred uh, that it will use a different shape. So if I uh, show what that looks like, you can see this uh, uh, this shape is changing quite dramatically. And we can do a very similar thing with the petals as well. So if I ramp that up to 100, you see the petals changing shape quite a lot. And I don't really like that in this case. So I'm going to bring that down uh, to about 50. And I'm also going to do that with the shape as well, maybe about 60. So we don't get completely crazy with our uh, uh, shape changing there. And finally, we've got our bright brightness randomization which uh, is exactly as it sounds really. This just makes uh, certain frames a bit brighter or certain frames a bit uh, dimmer. So just for maximum uh, randomness, I'm gonna put that right up to 100. So each instance also has its own uh, randomness override and random seed. Let me just show you what happens. Uh, random seed is uh, like you'd find in any so plugin that has uh, Perlin noise style um, effects here, like trap code, for example. Uh, if you just uh, change the random seed, you'll see the uh, shapes changing as I, as I uh, scrub that value there. You've also got this randomness override, which when at 100%, uh, this means it will take on these values. Uh, and when it's at 0%, it will mean that there's no randomness. So I press play now, it'll go back to the way it was before we dialed in that randomness uh, up here. So I think I'm going to leave that at 100% and maybe just take this one down a little bit uh, just so they're a tiny bit more different. And I may just scale Gene's uh, gone up a little bit here. This is from a short film that I directed just before Christmas called Disable Enable. Um, and we were using a strobe light here, a sound activated strobe light. So these guns were mechanical and they made a clicking noise when the trigger was pressed. And that um, activated the strobe light and gave us the interactive lighting. So there's no need for us to use the relighter uh, in this shot. Cool, so let's take a look at that. Nice, nice. So the last two things I want to do are to add some sparks and uh, also to uh, do some grain matching. This is pretty grainy plate. If I zoom into the full resolution here, um, you can see we've got like lots of grain here and not so much there, uh, where our, uh, our flash uh, gets a little bit dimmer. So I'll tackle that in a minute. Uh, for now, I'm just going to add some sparks. I'll zoom in a little bit here. We've got these uh, settings here. So I can add up to 100 sparks. Uh, this is the maximum number of sparks that you'll get. It's not the exact number of sparks. Again, it's a sort of random thing. So from frame to frame, it will uh, change the uh, number of sparks that get rendered. Um, I don't think we need that many. So I'm going to just use about 50. The dispersion again is a maximum uh, dispersion, so this is 20 degrees uh, from the axis. And that looks way too high, so I'm going to 
So bring that down to about 10 degrees. And obviously spark brightness is how visible they are. I think this effect works best when it's relatively subtle. So let's just try it at 25% and see how that looks. Yeah, there you go. Zoom out to see the whole picture. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now all I want to do is uh, to do some grain matching. Let me find a frame where we can see uh, something like that there. If I zoom right in. Quite a grainy looking plate, but uh, where we've got the dimmer areas of the flash, we don't have any uh, of this grain. Now Bang uh, can help you out with that, but it doesn't have its own grain matching uh, algorithms or anything like that. Instead, it relies on your preferred grain um, plugin of choice uh, on a 50% gray solid. And it uses that to uh, overlay uh, with the alpha channel of the, of the flash and, um, uh, and you can mix in the amount of grain that, you're, uh, that you want to match. Uh, and in order to do that, we've got this utility script here uh, underneath the utilities drop down here on the bank module selector, add grain precomp. So if I click that, that will create a precomp, bring it into this comp uh, with the, um, uh, the eyeball switched off. And if we open that up, we've got the same size comp. We've got the original plate here uh, as a um, as a guide layer so, so you can actually you know, go through each channel and uh, uh, match the grain uh, individually uh, and it adds the add grain uh, effect to this grey layer here. Now I find this quite slow so for this demo I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to add noise and grain noise and just just push it up a bit so that we can see what's going on. That'll probably be sufficient for this. Back in our comp, we find our bang render module. And down here, it's got the grain uh, drop down. We can choose our grain pre-comp and mix the grain. So as you can see, if I mix that down to zero, you can't see any uh, grain as I mix it up. The grain appears. So it's unlikely we'd see anything in these very bright areas anyway. Yeah, I'm just going to mix that up to about there. That looks pretty good. And that just helps to sit the flash into the shot a little bit better. Uh, it's really the you know one of the last stages of uh, of the comp that you'll go through, uh, but I think it really helps just to help make that look a bit more realistic. And this is the final shot. Okay, so don't forget to check out the user guide, which you can download with the plugin. It goes into a lot more detail about everything than I can squeeze into a demo. Um, feel free to download the trial version. Best thing to do really is just to play around with it. Drop in some of the Flash Builder presets and mess around with them until you've got something that works for your shot. Have fun. Cheers, guys.